Well, welcome to our 2022 Tracer 24 DBS. Starting right in your back bumper here. If you just kind of reach in, pull that cap on out of there. Inside of the back bumper, you're going to find your sewer hose. Take note of those two ears and the adapter here. It's how they're hooking it up to your sewer system. And the hose itself, once fully extended, is about 20 feet long. Just keeping it stored in the bumper back here to help keep any sort of stench out of the unit, keep things a bit fresher. A couple of steps forward right underneath the unit. You get your sewer connection. So you take that cap, kind of press on it, and give it a turn. It'll pop on out of there. You see it's got the same ears on it that your sewer hose had. That'll attach the same way, pressing it in, turning it until it clicks into place. On the left, you get a gray valve. On the right, you get a black. Black valve's controlling your black tank. Black tank is filled with your toilet. Of course, it's going to be your dirtiest water, so we'll be dumping that first. Once that's done, you can then come to the gray. Gray tank is going to be filled from your sinks as well as your shower. Typically, cleaner water will just dump that last, help keep that sewer hose as clean as possible. Straight up from there, you find your short cord inlet. Once you pop it open, you're going to find a little notch in the bottom corner there. It's going to line up with this notch here. Press those in together, a little eighth turn will lock it down. Then you get the threaded collar in the back to properly lock it into place. As you follow the cord back, you're going to find a standard 30 amp end there. Most campsites will have that. You can plug it straight on in and you're good to go. We do also provide you with a 15 amp adapter. So if you're looking to plug in at home to charge your batteries or on your fridge, you got the power to do so. Coming down towards the front of the unit, you're going to find your drains here. That low point drain we just got going right now is your fresh water tank. So just letting that drain out. The two lines behind it are your low, or your, uh, your low point drains for your water system. Basically, you got your water lines here. The low point is just right here. You open these up, it allows the water system to drain itself out. This little vent back here is just for your fresh tanks. So as you fill that up, you'll once you start getting to about full, you'll see some water spit out of there. It's just letting you know you're full. Water inlets are right inside of this compartment right here. So inside of here in the top, you're gonna find that little service light. Right in the center here, you've got your fresh water inlet. On the left, that cap just pops on open. Water hose sticks into there, turn on the water, and that fills up the fresh water tank. Like I said, you know it's full once it starts spewing water, spitting out of that vent in the bottom there. City water connection right here. Water hose will plug into there, turn on the water, and that'll pressurize the lines throughout the unit. Cable and satellite inlets on the right side here. Coax cable plugs into the respective ports, fires up at your TV location. Down in the bottom is a black tank flush valve. So you may notice over time after having gone and dumped your black tank, your monitor panel is still reading a third or two thirds, whatever it may be. Typically it's just some debris inside of the tank hanging between the probes. So what you can do is take your water hose and plug it into there. Open up your black valve, turn on the water and that'll just flush out that tank for you. Interior shower down in the bottom here. So you get this little hose here. It's got those two little ears on it on either side. It'll just line it up, line them up into their little inlets, press it in, eighth turn will lock it down. Then you get your hot and cold water here as well. Standard garden hose end at the end, so if you want to just put something on there, you can. Battery disconnect on the left side here, so with that off to the right, that's it turned on. Point it up and pull it down out of there, that's your battery then disconnected from the system. So whenever you're away from the unit, you want that off. Whenever you're at it, you want that turned on. Right in the top left corner is a solar charge controller, or solar charge, solar panel plug-in. Take your Furion solar panel, plug it into there, and that'll charge your batteries. This customer has opted to go with the weight distribution hitch. So we just got that stored right in here for him, as well as the water hose and a park adapter. So your 30 amp part would go into there, 15 to a standard household outlet. Around to the front of the unit, and that little black box there with the red light is a little tire pressure monitor sender. You'll have a little handheld unit that would sit inside of your truck. That guy just kind of sends the information to it. Your battery is housed inside of this box right here. So as long as you're plugged in through a short cord in the back, or your seven pins your tow vehicle, that battery will be charging for you. If you loosen off these two knobs here and press back those caps, you do get access to your propane tanks. For the video, I'll just pull this right off and then I can show you your changeover in the front here. It's currently green, pointing off to this tank, so it's just letting us know we're running off of this tank and we've got good propane. If it were to go red while you got that tank open, it's just letting you know that tank's now empty. At that point, you just flip over to the other tank, run off of that one while you get the other one filled. In front's a power tongue jack. On the left, you get your light switch. On the right, down is up and up is down. Other end of your storage compartment here. Inside of here, you're going to find two little manual overrides. So the uh, silver one here would be for all your power stabilizers. Up on the other side of the rod, you just attach it to there, runs them up and down. Then the big one here would be for your power tongue jack up front. Inside of here, there's also a little light right up on the front wall there. You can't quite see the switch too, too well, but it is a dual function switch where if you've got it over the left, that'll be in one. So that's just on is on. If you have it over the right, that's then two, and that's gonna use the motion sensing. So that's just your sensor right there. So once it senses a lack of motion for a minute or so, it'll turn itself off and turn itself back on once it senses motion. In the back wall here, you get your stabilizer jack switch, the press and hold extend, and the jacks will make their way down. Once they contact the ground, you'll kind of hear a bit of a load on the motor. Once you hear that, you're gonna stop. Uh, you'll notice there that they don't level the unit, they just kind of equalize. You just kind of want to get it as level as you can before bringing these down. 
you can hear that load on the motor once they're down all the way once you hear that you stop if you're to continue extending you can actually strip the gear pack right out of this motor which of course you don't want to be doing bringing them back up they just press and hold their track and they bring themselves back up There you go. Little leash latch here, so if you've got the dog out with you, you can tie him down. Bottle opener right by the door. GFI protected outlet here, as well as a cable and satellite outlet. So if you want TV outside, you've got the power to do so. Right beside it's the exhaust for your furnace. If you're ever running your furnace, you just want to make sure it's not blocked off. It does get hot. Straight up from there, your two exterior speakers. They do have little blue lights inside of them. The switch just inside the unit. We'll get there in a minute. This rear compartment here is your exterior kitchen. As you pop that open, magnetic latches hold it for you. Inside of here, you got a 120 volt fridge. As long as you're plugged in, this guy's going for you. A little bit of storage across the top here. There's a little light here as well. GFR protected outlet in the back. Travel latch right front and center. Pull that up and then you can swing it on out. Then you have the little locks on either side here just to lock it out all the way. Get hot and cold water at the sink here. Same sort of quick connect the two ears are just attached into there. And then the sink does not have a drain. You're just kind of pulling it out, dumping it out as you can. For the stove here, you're just going to pop it on open. You get the two little wings on either side that'll pop out and plop into place. Then your hose here, you're going to pull that collar back to undo the quick connect, just stretch it on out. Tail, pigtail comes right off the back of the stove there. You can attach our little extension piece to it. And then up at the unit here, you'd have that dust cap, of course, pulling that out, pushing that collar back, attach your hose, and lock it into place. It can be a little bit finicky sometimes. There we go. Once you have that hose attached, then you can open up this valve here. With that valve opened up, you cannot undo that quick connect, which is kind of an added safety. All right, and then at the stove here, you're gonna press it over to light, hit the igniter, and just as it clears the air out of that line, we'll get that flame going. So once you're done, you just turn it all off, letting it cool down, then you can close it all off again. Then you're going to close off the flow of propane at the trailer, undo the hose from there, reattach that plug, undo it from the unit, and then I just like to attach the hose to itself just to ensure that nothing's getting inside of there, undo our travel latches, and tuck her back away. Nice. And then in the back of the unit here, you get your hot water tank. So you're just going to take this keyway there, line it up, and you can pop it on open. All your controls for turning this guy on are just inside the unit. Before we turn it on, though, we just want to hit this relief valve right there. Make sure you're getting that shot of water coming out. If you're not getting any water coming out of there, there is a chance that it's empty, and you do run the risk of burning out your elements. So you just want to make sure it's full before firing it up. Once you're done, just locking it back down with the keyway. And lastly, back here, you get your spare tire. Straight up from there is your pre wired mount for a rear view or observation camera. And then for your rear stabilizer jack, that switch is just right on the back bumper here. So now we'll make our way inside of the unit. Here's this handle here, just up 90 degrees and it falls into place. And we can open up our door. All right, for your steps, pull that latch in and you can pop them on out. These little latches there, if you pull that out, you can extend or retract your legs based on your campsite needs. As you come inside, first things first, right on the left there, you get your fire extinguisher. That's standard. Pull the pin, point, and shoot. A little bit of storage right beside it underneath your sink here, so just being mindful of your drains and water lines. Straight up from there, we got all your light switches. The one on the left there is going to do all your interior lights. Center left is your awning light. Center right is your speaker lights. And on the far right is a front accent light across the front of the unit. Awning itself is on this switch here. Press and hold out, and the awning will make its way out. Once that awning is fully extended, we're going to see a little black flap come down as well as the black metal tube. Once you see that, you're going to stop. If you are to continue extending, it can actually wind itself up backwards, in which case the fabric would be underneath the tube, allowing it to hold water, accelerating your growth of mold and mildew. There's the flap, there's the tube, so we'll stop right there. Now if it were to start raining, it's of course going to hold some water anyway, so what you're going to do is grab either arm front or rear, pull straight down on it. 
and you can see that changes the pitch of the awning out at the head, allowing water to then run off. Now, if you like that angle better, because it does give you more shade, you can do the same thing with the arm up front. Before you bring it back in, though, you want to make sure those arms are back out straight and fully extended, just so you're not running the risk of bending them. Then we'll press and hold in, and the awning will make its way back in. Again, you're just watching to make sure that your fabric's over top of the tube. Then the last thing to keep in mind with your awning is it does catch a lot of wind. So once you get up to about 15 to 20 kilometers an hour wind, you want to bring it back in. Again, just so you're not running the risk of bending your arms. So while we're waiting on that guy to come in, I can give you a look at this motion sensing light here. So you have these switched on the back side here. So you have the one on the left there, so that's just on is on. And then two is going to be your dual function, right? So that's where it's using the motion sensor. Slide out is on the right side here. Press and hold out and the slide will make its way out. Once that slide's fully extended, you'll just hear the motors kind of whine and then turn themselves off. That's normal, right? That whine is just them kind of squaring themselves up. There we go. So your light switch right here is going to be for your front bedroom. And as we come into the front bedroom here, straight up with your product, a pre-wire for your Wi-Fi. Closet spaces are both identical. Just open, you get the hanger across the top. G5 protected outlet in the end here. And then either head has a little reading light there. There it is. If you pick up the foot of your bed, you do get access to a little storage compartment there. Your two doors are just sliding, so you do have that TV backer right in the center of them there. It does have the standoff to kind of sit behind them. The little travel latches back there as well. Straight up from there, you'll find your pre wash or power outlets and your cable and satellite outlets. So, other side here, you get that identical closet space. This cushion across the top here would be for your dinette once we set that up into the bed, so I'll show you that in a second here. Blinds throughout the unit, just kind of sit where you leave them, pop them up, and they stay there. Little red tab there, you're going to pull that to get rid of the screen, take this handle here, throw it outside, hop on out. Right around the corner from your bed, you've got your thermostat here, so you can press that power button to turn it on, and you can cycle through all your modes. So you got right in the top there, we got cool. At this point, you can select your fan speed of high, low, or auto. Typically, just going to leave that in auto. 10 selection is going to be with your arrows here. Once that air conditioner gets going, you got two different options. You can have this louver here closed, in which case we'll be using all of our ceiling ducting to move the air. Or you can open it up and it just dumps all of its air into the living room here. When you first get out to your campsite, you want that open, cool off this air as quickly as possible, then you can close it off and start moving the air throughout. Hit mode again after cool, it'll come down into heat. There's no fan speed selection here, it's just kind of on is on. Selecting your temperature again, just your arrows there. Once that furnace fires up, it'll be moving its air through a bunch of little of these black portals that you'll see up on the walls. After heat, if you hit mode again, it'll come down into fan. At this point, you can select your fan speed, and it's just kind of moving some air around with the air conditioning fan. There's no cooling involved there. After fan, it'll come down into dry. It's going to run the low fan with the compressor to try and get rid of any sort of humidity out of the units. After dry, you hit mode again. It cycles back up to cool. So if you turn it off, you're just going to press and hold it. And that'll turn it off. Right behind the TV here, you get your power outlet. Kind of beside that, you've got your antenna outlet. So you can see that's hooked up already. You get this little button on the side there. turns on that green light that is just turning on the power for your antenna. Cable and satellite outlet above it. You can see your TV is on a mount here, so it does swing out. That's why we've got the travel straps here for you, so that it's not banging around while you're out traveling. Stereo's right down underneath it. Power button in the center there. Select is going to get through all your settings. Mode through all your inlets. And then volume controls on the right side. Zone one is the sound bar itself. Zone two is your outside set of speakers. A little bit of open storage just right underneath it. Beside all that, we've got your LP detector. Propane heavier than air, sits on the floor. This guy detects it and starts going off just like a smoke detector would. Smoke detector itself is pretty well straight up from there. Simple as that. In the dinette, you can see it's currently set up as the dinette. Your light for that is just straight up on the top. You push button right in the side. If you were to take your dinette table, wiggle it up and out of its legs, the legs will then wiggle out of their bases. The table will then sit onto these three ledges that you got there. You'll take that back cushion as well as the filler cushions to fill in the bed. That'll create your bed for you. In the kitchen, you get your storage right up top here. Inside of here, you're going to find that binder. It's got all of your owner's manuals, any remotes, any keys, anything like that. You're going to find right in there. 
There's also a little sticker right up here. So that's your Lippert One Control Password and Device Name that allows you to connect your phone to the unit and any switch that you've got on that switch panel there, you'll be able to run that. So you're awning your slide and your lights. Hot and cold water at the sink, of course. Folding cover there is made of actual stainless. So if you need to put something hot on there, you can. Access to that storage underneath it from the front as well. All the drawer space inside of this top one, you're gonna find that handheld display for your tire pressure monitor system. That's what we just plug into your truck. Just all the open storage here as well. Microwaves right up top, pretty standard, just like home. Not much I can teach you there. Down underneath it, your range vent, your light, and your fan. The stove just has a bifold cover that flips on back. You're gonna take the knob over the little pilot light and get it going. Once you're done, you're just turning them all back off, letting it cool down, and closing that cover back off. For the oven, you're just going to pop that open, turn this knob on the far right over that little pilot light, hit the igniter, and you can see it gets going. Once you have it going, you just hold for another couple seconds, then you can release, and the flame will hold itself. Turn up to your desired temperature, and she turns right on for you. Once you're done, just turn it back down to pilot. It'll hold just the pilot light, but if you're going traveling, you just want to make sure it's right off. Switch on the right side, one does the knobs, two does the knobs as well as the oven. Underneath your oven is your converter, you're going to press the top and center, it'll pop on open, you get all of your breakers in the middle here, whenever a breaker breaks it sits in the center, so just turn it off and then back on to reset it. All of your fuses are on the right side, whenever a fuse pops there's a little red LED right beside it letting you know exactly which one went. Your fridge is fully 12 volt, as long as you're plugged in with your batteries charged or charging, this guy's going for you. Down underneath it's the return air for your furnace, you just kind of want to make sure it's not blocked off. The two bunk spaces are both identical. You get your light up on the side there just on its own center push button, power outlet for it. Down underneath, same idea except you have a USB outlet down here. If you're looking to winterize the unit yourself once it comes time, if you just pop this mattress up, there's one screw in the front here. This panel will pop up and you get access to your hot water tank right in the back there. It's kind of a doghouse storage underneath. A bit of pantry space over here. And then in the kit or your bathroom, come through here. All your lights here are those uh, motion sensing lights again. Roof vent, you just turn that knob to open it up. Back corner, you get a switch that turns on the fan. Toilet flips on open. You get your flusher front and center. Travel latch for your shower here. Slide it on open. Standard head, sorry, stainless head and hose with a nicer shower head. Hot and cold water, of course. Hot and cold water at the sink. Again, a bit more storage underneath it. Be mindful of the drains and your water lines. GFI protected outlet beside it, test on the left, reset in the center. So if you ever have outlets that don't work, it's the first thing you should check. Monitor panel here in the bottom right corner, you get your water pump switch. As you turn that on, just turns on your water pump, drawing out of your fresh tank to pressurize your lines. Monitor systems above it, so you have battery there. You can see we're currently C for charging. G would be good, F is fair, L is low. Your fresh tank, as you fill that up, we'll go to a third, two thirds, and full. Same idea for your black and your gray. That's your hot water tank controls. So on the left there, you get that little thunderbolt, just letting you know you're firing it up with electricity. And on the right, it's a little flame. Turn that switch on and fire up with electricity, or sorry, with propane. If that little check light there were to come on, it's just letting you know it hasn't fired up at that point. Just off, back on to reset it. Sat right here, you can actually hear the whir of the flame, so you know it's good. So that's about it for this unit. If you've got any other questions on it, please feel free to give us a call 204 237 7272.